My family and food is my passion and shopping for the very best fresh ingredients is what makes all the difference. Join me as we go on a journey of heartwarming food filled with mouth-watering dishes bound to get those taste buds tingling. Welcome to my kitchen. There's nothing nicer than a meal for family and friends, which can be simple yet stylish and quite fuss-free. So today we're going to start off with some parmesan crisps and avocado salsa. A light cob salad, very colourful and delicious. The pepper steaks with some parsnip fritters. And we're ending off with a decadent white chocolate tiramisu with berries. So we're going to start with the tiramisu. This is quite loose, it can be served in a nice glass bowl or as individual servings for dessert. We've got delicious raspberries, blueberries and strawberries, some Kahlua and cocoa which I'm going to dip my finger biscuits into, some white chocolate which is going to go into the whole mixture and some caster sugar and eggs which are the base of the whole dish. So the idea is to make it fluffy and creamy. The more you beat the eggs and the sugar, the better the dish will hold. I like the eggs at room temperature because they really beat well and I always use jumbo eggs because they really give you more volume. So it's a whole egg not separated. Cast the sugar and we're using the wire whisk to get them nice and fluffy. My mixture is thick and fluffy. I'm going to add the mascarpone now. It's the only cheese that can be added and beaten that stiffens as you beat. Cream cheese becomes loose where mascarpone becomes nice and thick. And it's available in most supermarkets. Some quant sometimes you'll get it, it's a little bit more runny than other times, but it doesn't matter because it will beat nice and stiff. And it gives you a full cream, beautiful flavor in your dish. So it's not sour like cream cheese. It takes about five minutes for the mascarpone to get nice and thick and you can actually see it by the ribbons that it forms in the mixture. I want to add half of the white chocolate because I need to sprinkle some between the layers when we're assembling it and this gives you an even more decadent taste into your mixture. So that's the base of the tiramisu. What we need to do is take our cocoa powder our Kahlua and some boiling water. It's about a cup of boiling water and we're going to whisk that to dip our finger biscuits in. So I need to loosen all those little pieces of cocoa which tend to be quite dry so the whisk will just get rid of all the lumps. The finger biscuits take just a few minutes. We don't want to soak them too long otherwise they'll fall apart. Lightly dip them in, really doesn't take long and we're going to layer this about four biscuits on the base. You can make this as big or as small as you like. I've used three eggs today, but the actual recipe calls for six. It's just for the family, so I don't want to make it too big. And now, we'll spoon a little bit of that. Half the mixture should go at this stage. Some berries, raspberries, and a few slices of strawberry, just to give me some colour. It's very visual, it looks beautiful and summery and fresh. And we want to sprinkle just a little bit of chocolate over that. You could actually leave it like that, but we want to do one more layer. Top it with some more mixture. I could dig my spoon into that immediately. A few more berries. Quite loose, it's not formal, it's not set in a big dish um, as you would a normal tiramisu. And I haven't used any coffee, which is the traditional way of making tiramisu. 
few more berries on top. And when you slice the strawberries this way, you actually see the inside of the strawberry more than slicing it down the strawberry this way. So it gives you a nicer look in the dish. Finish with a little sprinkling of some more white chocolate. And that's my decadent white chocolate tiramisu. I'm going to set that in the fridge and let's get on with our pasta fritters. A parsnip is part of the potato family. It's a starch and it can either be roasted, made into a mash, or what we're going to do today is make some parsnip fritters, which are slightly different and go perfectly with my pepper steak. I like to fry with sunflower oil. It's light, it's vegetarian, and we're not frying in deep oil. So the idea is to get it really, really hot so that your parsnip fritters fry quickly. Uh, we just want to coat the bottom of the pan, give it a slight little bit of depth to the oil and we want to get that oil very hot before we start. So what I want to do is make ribbons out of the parsnip just by simply using a vegetable peeler and peeling it into very very thin strips. That's fine, that should be enough for us to work with. Let's break the egg, beat it up and if it's a little bit thick, this mixture, all you want to do is add a drop of water just to loosen the egg slightly. Right, so we need about two tablespoons of flour. And it's not that they are full of flour, they're really quite light. So the definition of the parsnip comes out. Now parsnips are a starch, so they cook like a potato and crisp when they cook. We're using some nice sea salt, natural sea salt, black pepper in there and we'll just whisk that egg into this mixture and if it's a little bit thick all I'm going to do is add a drop of water just to loosen it up slightly. Be careful when you're adding the parsnips because you don't want them to splatter all over the place so we're going to just bunch them into a little mound like that. Place it in the oil just to drain off that excess liquid and you want to shape it in the pan so that it holds together and it's a very quick fry you don't want them to be in here too long because they're going to get quite oily so what we want to do is do about five minutes don't turn them let them just sit in the oil and fry until they really get nice and brown on the one side and then turn them on the other side the oven's already on 140 degrees and they need about 10 minutes just to crisp After the break, we're going to make a vegetarian version of a cob salad with a delicious dressing. Parmesan crisps are quick and easy and make a great starter with an avocado salsa. And later on, I'm going to cook some delicious pepper steaks. Today we're making a wonderful weekend meal for the family. We've already made a deconstructed white chocolate tiramisu and our pasta fritters are in the oven and are almost done. So let's get going on our cob salad. I'm going to make a vegetarian version and the idea is that everything is chopped so you could actually add whatever you like into the salad. What's really nice is that we can mix all different kinds of vegetables and we want lots of colour in it. So it's done in rows and it's almost like a French salad but with a twist in that it's very colourful with the rows of vegetables. So I have a cucumber, some hard boiled egg, avocado, baby rosa tomatoes, some olives, croutons, sun dried tomatoes. My dressing will have some red onion, sugar, chilli, Dijon mustard, dry mustard and two vinegars which won't discolour the dressing, apple cider and white balsamic vinegar. I like to do a base of lettuce and my lettuce is in paper towel to keep it nice and fresh. Whenever I wash it, I'll dry it quite well, but this really takes off the excess water and keeps it longer in the fridge. So I'm using cos lettuce, which is a nice coarse lettuce that withstands a heavy dressing. It's quite simple in that it's almost like a French salad, but a take on it. So this is the base of the whole platter. 
and then I'm going to start with some egg. I need to work out the colours so that I've got my tomato, the red, the two reds on one side. I've got two greens, so I need to work out exactly where I'm putting that. Hard boiled eggs, just chopped, and I think I'll put those in the middle. I'm chopping them quite coarsely because everything here is not going to be cut too fine. Whenever you make a salad and you cut everything quite small, it actually makes the whole dish smaller. So if you want to give it a larger look, just chop it a bit bigger, it gives it more volume and it spreads more easily. So we'll put that down the center of the platter. Then I'm going to do my tomatoes. I'm just going to cut them into little slices. Now I'll do the sun-dried tomatoes, which will also give me a nice color on this side. They're quite soft. I haven't soaked them. They haven't been put in, in olive oil or anything. So I'm just going to slice them. They're quite strong, so sun-dried tomatoes don't need to be used in abundance. My English cucumber, and this is really the easiest way to dice or cube a cucumber, cut it lengthways and then just stack it on top of each other. Cut them long like this. And then what we're all we're going to do is cut across the cucumber like that. And you can see I'm not cutting them too small so that I'm getting a nice volume out of them. And that will go on one side. Let's put them over here. So I've got a nice long row of cucumber. My avo, because I'm going to eat the salad quite soon, doesn't need to be dipped into boiling water. But my great avo tip is always to put a whole avo in a bowl of boiling water for literally one minute to stop it going brown and which makes it easier to peel. This time, because I'm using it, we're going to use it as is. Peel the avo. Then we're going to cut it into little cubes. And that should fit on the side here. So I've mixed my colors really well. And then to finish it, what we're going to do is add some olives. And a great way to pit olives if you don't have an olive pitter, because I love Kalamata olives, but in a salad I really don't want to sit there spitting out pips. So the easiest way is to take your hand, just squash the, the olive like that, and literally the pip will come out. So you don't need any fancy gadgets, which is quite nice. And it's such a simple way of, of doing the olive pip. Right, and those will go over here in a nice row. And my croutons I'm going to keep for later because I'll sprinkle them on after we've made the dressing. Whenever you peel an onion, keep the bottom root on and just peel from the top so you're only taking the top off. It actually peels much easier. Now I can cut it off at the root. It makes it a lot simpler. We only need a little bit because we don't want to overpower the whole dish. So it's about a quarter of an onion that we're going to pop into a blender. I need my mustard powder, Dijon mustard, some chili, some sugar, my vinegars, and I always use a classic olive oil or golden olive oil for salad dressings. You never want to use an extra virgin which is too strong and overpowers the whole thing. So this one is quite nice and golden, beautiful in color. I have some celery and we just need about one celery stick. So the base of the dressing is about two thirds of a cup of olive oil. Olive oil goes in, I'm going to blend the whole thing. We need about three tablespoons each of white balsamic and, and apple cider vinegar. So you always want to have three parts oil to one part to a third actually of vinegar. That's fine. So this is Dijon mustard, about two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, some mustard powder, a pinch of chili just to give you a nice kick to the whole thing. Okay some sugar, about a teaspoon of sugar. And I'm going to add the onion and celery and the machine will chop it all up. And a nice natural sea salt, a little bit black pepper and one last blend. 
So I never want to dress the salad too soon because if I dress it, the whole salad will wilt. This kind of salad, you're going to pour the dressing over and leave it and let people take what they like. What's nice about it is that they can actually take from different parts of the salad if they prefer one vegetable or another. Parmesan crisps make a great starter. Together with an avo salsa, they're simple, easy, and low carb, or no carb, actually. This is a piece of grana padano. Now, there are many different varieties of parmesan. Basically, grana padano and parmigiano reggiano, which are the two main parmesans that one can buy. The parmigiano reggiano is an aged parmesan, very expensive, and padano is not quite as expensive and perfect for what we are going to do. We need a small piece. Parmesan is actually the only cheese that can be grated and, and baked in the oven that doesn't melt completely. So I need to grate it quite coarsely on the coarse side of the grater. We'll make little mounds and bake them in an oven of 180 degrees. They'll take about 10 minutes and you need to watch them because they cook quite fast and if you overdo them they can burn around the edges. But what you want is that bubbling and all the cheese to melt together. So if it's not long enough they won't set and if it's too long they're going to be a little bit burnt. So the ideal is probably about 10 minutes. Middle rack of the oven, don't use the bottom rack because it's too close to the element. And they don't take long at all, so you can make as many or as little as you like. So a small handful, shape them into a round and push them quite flat. Don't mound the parmesan too much. So you want them spread a little bit apart. They're not going to swell. They're not going to melt all over. I have a liner that I'm putting them on, which just stops them from sticking. You could use baking paper if you like, or directly onto your baking tray. I've made about six. They're spaced apart. My oven is preheated to 180 degrees, and they'll probably take about 10 minutes. It's as simple as that. In a minute, we'll finish our avocado salsa to go with our parmesan crisps, and we'll grill the pepper steak to finish off the meal. We're making a delicious weekend meal for the family, and we've already made a deconstructed white chocolate tiramisu. My cob salad's ready. And I've just taken the parsnip fritters and parmesan crisps out of the oven. They need to rest for a few minutes while we do our pepper steak. So first I need to preheat my pan, and when it's nice and hot, then I can sear the steaks. I have beautiful rump steak here which I want to rub with a little bit of olive oil. Now the secret to doing a steak is not to put the oil in the pan, but rather to put it on the meat. If you put it in the pan, it tends to stew a little bit and you're not going to get it searing and beautiful color on it. So just a little bit to coat it. I'm going to sprinkle it with some coarse salt. I like to use a nice natural sea salt. And we want to put a little bit of black pepper on it. And if you don't put seasoning on your meat, you'll find it doesn't have enough flavor and they'll take about four minutes on each side for medium rare. The trick with meat is not to cook it too long that it gets hard. And how you'll be able to test it is actually feeling the meat. And my, my best trick for you is if you feel your hand here, that is actually raw meat. So if you touch one finger to your thumb, that's medium rare. The middle finger makes it medium and that's exactly how you'll know when your meat is ready. So it's simply a touch thing, quite simple and quite easy. My pan is ready. We're gonna leave them for four minutes and while they're cooking, we're going to make the avocado salsa for the parmesan crisps. I'm going to dice the avo quite small because the crisps are not so big so we don't want the pieces to be too large. It's a very simple recipe. All I need is some fresh lime juice or bottled lemon juice if you don't want to use fresh limes, some chives, a little bit of black pepper and some salt. So we start off with our avocado. We're going to cut them quite small because our crisps are not too big. So we don't need an enormous amount of, of avo for this. This avo is a little bit firmer, so I have to peel it. 
I love using fresh lime juice. If they're in season, they're fantastic in something like this because it doesn't make the salsa too tart. I've got some beautiful chives from the garden, and chives are not quite as strong as spring onion. So they're going to give me a little bit of colour without adding too much onion flavour. I've got my fabulous lemon and lime squeezer. And this will obviously keep it from going black. A little bit of black pepper and a little pinch of salt. Right, so the salsa is ready. Let's have a look at our steak. You can see that this has already got gorgeous colour. Turn it over. It seals in the juices beautifully. So the more you turn it, the less colour you're going to get. And that's the secret. Leave it. Let it do its own thing. You want to get all the juices inside so that that meat is beautiful and tender. I think these steaks are perfect. They feel medium rare. So I'm going to take them off, put them on a plate and let them rest for about two minutes because meat needs to rest before you carve it. While they're resting, the parsnip fritters are perfect. They're golden, they're crispy, they've dried out in the middle. They'll be absolutely perfect when that steak is ready. A little bit of parsley just to decorate. And I like to use Italian parsley because the Italian parsley has so much more flavor, you can actually smell it as it's chopping. That's great. A little bit on my parsnip fritters. Parmesan crisps have cooled. They're nice and firm. I'm going to add them to the platter. And these are great as a starter because I find lots of people don't like carbs. We'll add the avocado salsa on the side. The salad just needs dressing and a little bit of croutons. Just drizzle it over and it kind of drips through all the veggies. The croutons will finish it off so I'm going to sprinkle those along the edges. The steaks are great. Got a really nice sharp knife. And you can see that the juices have come out of the meat, so it should be nice and pink inside. Perfect. Not too underdone. For those of you that like meat medium rare, they're just perfect. And we'll place that on the platter. Some parsley for decoration. Just a little bit. It just lifts the whole platter. This decadent chocolate tiramisu finishes off my easy family weekend meal, which is fuss-free but simple and stylish. We're starting off with some parmesan crisps, a vibrant green avocado salsa. We have a delicious cob salad, lots of beautiful colors. Pepper steaks and parsnip fritters. To finish off, my favorite part of the meal, dessert, decadent white chocolate tiramisu with fresh berries, especially for summer. Next week, I'll be making rosemary and lamb kebabs, homemade tzatziki with chopped salad, a delicious roasted butternut sweet potato and feta salad, and fresh peach tarts. Lunch by the pool has never been this stylish.